Wherever we go, we're sponsored by the churches and we try to integrate all of our work in the churches so that after the meetings are over, you carry on in your heart in the church. Now, but God is building his kingdom, but so is Satan building his. He's got his emissaries. And the scripture says in Matthew 13, Jesus said, And when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, then cometh the wicked one, the devil, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Now you see, you can hear the word of God tonight, and as you leave, the devil is trying to snatch it away. So it won't take root. Now the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, said Jesus. Yes, there is an enemy, the devil. There was a sports writer who wrote the other day of a baseball superstar willing to sell his soul to the devil. Many people have sold their souls to the devil. Very cheaply too. Decided to reject Christ, reject God, and just go out and have a good time. The pleasures of this world have been too strong for you. Or maybe the pressures of life have been too strong and you've given in. And then thirdly, your soul is valuable because of God's concern. The whole Bible is concerned with the saving and developing of the soul in many ways. The Lord is long-suffering to us with not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Notice that. God is not willing that you should ever perish. God doesn't want you to be lost. He wants you to be saved, so much so that he has delayed judgment to give you time, so much so that he gave his son on the cross for your sins. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The German poet Novalis was quoted in Time magazine April 14. Love is the final purpose of world history, the amen of the universe. Love is the greatest thing in the world. Henry Drummond used to preach sermons on it and wrote a book on it. But the scripture says herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation or a covering for our sins. In other words, when Christ died on the cross, he was expressing the love of God toward you and by his death covering your sins. Every sin you've ever committed, he covers so that he'll never judge you. I'll never be at the great white throne judgment of God. My judgment is past because you see the cross itself was a judgment. God judged his son in my place. So I don't have to face the judgment. I'll have to face the judgment seat of Christ where believers go to give an account of the life they've lived after they've come to Christ and to give an account of their discipleship and the faithfulness of the life that they lived in loving their brother or their sister or in doing good works, I'll be judged. But as far as my salvation is concerned, as far as going to heaven is concerned, that's all past. Because I did what God told me to do. I repented of my sins. I received Christ as Savior. At the cross is where it was done for you. And then fourthly, it's valuable because of the nature of its loss. When we were in New York, a boy fell in a well. And in one hour, because of radio reports that they needed help, 3,000 people offered to help. In one hour. I remember in North Carolina, a child wandered in the woods, and it seemed like the whole state almost stopped to look for that child. But your soul is far more valuable. What have you done about your soul? Well, you lose in this life. You can't get it all. Suppose you had the whole world, but you can't get the whole world. You can't even get just, you just get a little slice of it. That's all. 
and you can't take it with you. Have you ever seen a hearse on the way to the cemetery and a U-Haul trailer behind? <laughs> you can't take it with you. I remember when John D. Rockefeller Sr. died many years ago, it was in the paper, somebody asked, how much did he leave? And the answer was, he left it all. <laughs> we take nothing with us, and yet we spend our lives trying to pile it up. Even if you got it all, it doesn't bring peace and happiness and joy. It doesn't help in time of trouble. One of the message songs of folk singers in America is, I'm not prepared for eternity. Are you prepared? And then you lose in the life to come. There's a song that says, the only hell there is, is here and now. It's not true. There's one to come. There's a headline the other day that read in the Toronto Star, Highway to Hell, on April 4th. And the scripture has many descriptions of hell. I'm not going to go to the Middle Ages where they had tremendous vivid imaginations. And we saw the devil with his long horns and his pitchfork and all that. That's the product of somebody's imagination back in the Middle Ages. But the Bible does say in Psalm 11:6 that it's a horrible tempest. Psalm 18:5 it calls it a place of sorrows and Matthew 13 Jesus called it a place of wailing it's called by Jesus a place of weeping it's called by Jesus a place of filthiness it's called by Jesus a place of outer darkness it's called by Jesus a place of unrest many descriptions of it what it really means is separation from God you're separated from God tonight because of sin and that separation continues right on after death and then fifthly it's valuable because of the price paid for the redemption for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot one of the pictures of a teenager the last couple of weeks has been Olga Peters, the granddaughter of Joseph Stalin. She's returned to England to attend a Christian boarding school near Cambridge run by the Quakers. She says she's a Christian. Is she? Only God knows that. But what about your soul? What if you lost it? What if you're losing it? What can you do about it? Tonight, you can repent of your sin. That word repent means to say, Lord, I have sinned, and you're willing to turn from your sin. God will have to help you to turn. You can't turn by yourself. You don't have the strength to, but he'll help you. I heard the story years ago about a juggler, famous juggler, and uh, he had made a big fortune, and he put all the money he had in 